And recently, the governor said that even in parliament, education is never discussed. It's brought into the house at the last moment. There's no more uh, time left to discuss, so it's guillotined. But if you read the mind of the government, read the mind of the government, they apply the negative thought to it. It's high time for Mekhalia to stop politicized education. It's high time for Mekhalia to, to, uh, to come with one mindset, and that mindset should be, we can't compromise on, on, uh, on the quality of education. Let's, uh, let's come clear. It's, it's, uh, we can do politics on a lot of things, but at least let's spare education. If a new teacher was appointed, when we compare with any teacher, for example, Bart Robert, who has been teaching for 30 years, we get the same salary, fixed pay. So with this increment, which means that there will be a difference of payment. In fact, government opinion doesn't think about salary at all. They will just say, you take, this is, a, this is the money for salary that we have given you, the capping that they have. The rest, the government of Meghalaya, the state, state, or the state of Meghalaya has to come in. Hello, viewers. Today we have a very enlightened panel to discuss the issue of education. Education in Meghalaya is fraught with several problems arising from, I think, essentially the lack of a policy which prevents proper planning. There are no checks and balances. There is no accountability system. And there has been for a long time politicization of appointment of teachers. To discuss all these issues and, of course, the ongoing strike by the SSA teachers, we have with us in the panel Mr. Andrew Wajri, the De Deputy Director, Education Department. We have Ba Sanborn Jung Ai. He is the Organizing Secretary, Federation of All School Teachers of Meghalaya, which just had a strike last month. We have Ba Batskhem Marbo academician and columnist. And we have Robert Jun Khajarin, practicing lawyer and an activist. And uh, he has been for a long time with the New Treb Youth Council. To begin this discussion, we should first go to somebody from the government uh, to give us an explanation of why we are in the state that we are today. There are many problems, but can you list out some of them and is there a way that these problems can be resolved? Thank you for having me here. Um, yes, I do agree with, uh, with the things that are happening now. It's basically, there's a lot of lack of planning and lack of policies. And we do have uh, the impending problem which has been here with us. It's like a, it's, it's a legacy that we've been carrying on. Yes. Uh, Number one problem is that uh, most of these schools that we have we having now is school we uh, inherited from the district councils. Yes. At that point of time, there were no policies even from government of India also. I remember the Meghalaya taking over of yes. primary schools in 1994. Yes. 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 So prior to that time also, we have teachers being appointed without any criteria or norms. There are no criteria or norms given by the government of India also at that point of time. So basically, whoever is free, who is available, can always come into teaching. There, there's always a saying that teaching As is, late as 1994. Yes, exactly. Yes. So only when the government take over the uh, district council schools throughout Meghalaya, there has been some sign of, uh, you know, regulation with respect to appointment of teacher, recruitment policies. But there are still some gaps that happen. So when you have this kind of problem at the grassroots level, so definitely at the later stage, there's definitely going to be an effect, which you have seen right now. And that has been carried on till today. As you can see from the performance grading index that we have gone very badly, mm -hmm. the national assessment survey that we had, that's also shown a very bad uh, light on in Meghalaya, especially in learning outcomes. And then of course, uh, we have problems of infrastructure. Uh, that is always, we always talk about that. It's basically a physical problem that we have. And government is trying its best to meet all these. Uh, when gaps. we look at the number of schools, why is it that West Garo Hills such, has such a high number of government primary schools, 1100? That's because Garo Hills does not have much of the NGOs or the uh, local bodies who are ready to take up education. And unlike in the Khasi and Jaintia and Riboys. 
Yes, we have a lot of... Uh, but are all those schools viable enough to carry on? Uh, that is a challenge for us, ma'am. It's a big challenge for us uh, because uh, in the Garo Hill, Garo Hill regions, there are a lot of challenges in terms of uh, accessibility. We still have a problem till today. Mm -hmm. And teachers who are well qualified will not stay in those areas for a long time. And we like facilities of, uh, of uh, housing, you know, housing and problems and you know these uh, allowance which is not meeting mm -hmm. as much as it is. So therefore, uh, the quality of education, especially in Gulf Hills, has actually affected the entire state of Meghalaya. Mm -hmm. So that is it's actually in paper. You could if you could read the uh, SSLC uh, examination results and then the higher secondary, then NAS, youth and PGI, SDG, all these uh, data that, uh, that are being given, you will see that the Garo Hills region has actually affected the entire state. Because of this impending uh, reason of the grassroots level. We don't okay, have we'll, we'll come well. back to that. Let me go to Ba Sanborn. Uh, the, the organization that you're leading just had a strike last month. So, why do you think you had to go on strike? Did the government break any deal with you? Or uh, were you asking for a better pay, perks? Okay, thank you, ma'am, for inviting Fastum to be a part of this panel discussion. So when we talk about Fastum, uh, it was actually established in the year 2019. Uh, it is a federation that includes all teachers. So how many How teachers. many teachers would there be in this organization? Uh, we have around 8,000 teachers. And there are around 1,900 schools all over Meghalaya. Mm -hmm. So let me come directly to the reasons why did Fastum have to come on the streets. The, the first reason we can say here is because of the enhancement period. So looking back at the previous government, so we can see here that the last enhancement period, it took place in the year 2016. Mm -hmm. And then before that, it was in the year 2013. And then before that, it was 2010. Then going by that statistics, we can see that every three years, the government enhanced the salary of the adult teachers. But right from 2016, According to the statistics, we should get an enhancement in the year 2019. The first enhancement for this present government, and the second enhancement, it should be this year, 2022. But right from the year 2019, we only heard from the government, especially the Education Concern Minister, he always states that uh, the government is examining the process of enhancement right from the year 2019, then that process, it continue in 2020, then 21, and even here also in 2022, also the government listed that it is still under examination. So lately... So, so from your side, have you been able to give the government any kind of suggestions on to how to, because the government we know is claiming that it doesn't have the required funds. Yes. So what are the ways of raising that revenue to pay the teachers because I remember during PA Sangma's time he had said that uh, you know the, uh, the the taxes the revenue that comes from coal and other <clears throat> other resources would go into funding the teachers especially primary school teachers but I think that hasn't happened okay we have got one simple suggestion to us uh, if the government wanted that additional amount in order to enhance or to upgrade us to any category, uh, the first point is that the government should form what we can say a monitoring committee to check and see that the revenue collection meant for the state treasury is accurate and transparent. That was the first thing. And secondly, we will suggest the government to enhance the existing 3% of tax meant for education to at least 10%. So which means with these two, we can say here that the government, especially the education department, they will get an additional fund 
in order to brought us to any category. So from where will this uh, 10% be mopped up from? Which sector? Which? Uh... Uh, you see, when we talk about this, we had a discussion with one of the officers, who is the under secretary of education, Bak Long, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he, he gave us the idea that the government is possible to upgrade you even to the deficit pattern if the government increase this tax from 3% to 10%, it may be from mining, it may be from, we can say here, from limestone, it may be from cement especially, uh, it may be from tobacco, alcohol, so on and so forth. Uh, we have got many sources, we can say here, of taxes that is meant for education. Okay. So we do hope that, sir, you can take this message <laughs> to the, your department, maybe if there are ways and means, we do hope that, I, I, I think uh, it's very important for the stakeholders in the system, the parents, the teachers, and the government to have a one-on-one. -on -one. What is wrong with that? But there's never, mm -hmm. never been any consultation, mm -hmm. as we said today in your Facebook post. Mm -hmm. But now let me come to Baabat's chem. You have been in the education field for a long time now, and you said that you've come from a village school, and you've reached the level where you are today. Uh, what do you foresee is going to happen if this is constantly going to happen, this teachers being out on the streets? It's a national shame. You know, it's not just a shame for the state. It's a national shame, and people have been telling me, please make this into national news. I told them, we are not a national newspaper, so we, there's hardly much we can do. So what do you think is the problem and how do you think these problems can be resolved once and for all? Uh, to resolve this problem of education in the state of Meghalaya, we just need political will. There's, you know, we don't need to go far mm -hmm. beyond that. Okay. When you look, uh, you know, in, <laughs> It's very sad to say this. You know, in the whole of Northeast, I think it is only in Megalia where we have recurring, you know, teachers ag agitation. And to the extent that they sleep on the street, that is really shameful. Uh, any civilized society which promises to provide education to the children cannot, cannot afford to do that. So and in, and in it, the yeah, rain, in yeah, the rain. It is, you know, the very fact that teachers have to sleep on the street is really shameful. So I would say that there is a need for political will. You know, if the state like Manipur, which has more or less the same population uh, like Bengala, and in fact, they are more complicated society yes. compared to us, and Tripura also more or less like our state, if they can solve the problem, if they don't face this kind of problem, what's wrong with Megalaya? And Megalaya, we have better resources. Yes, yes. We have uh, minerals, minerals, we have tourism. What don't we have here? We have almost everything. Timber. And therefore, what is needed is the just a political will. I just, uh, you know, I, uh, I stress here the importance of coordination between three important people. Chief Minister, Finance Minister, and Education Minister. These three heads, and presently we have two heads because the Chief Minister is yeah, also, also the Finance Minister. minister. If Assam can provincialize, yes, Assam also, it is the private sector. It is a private entity that established schools. But progressively they provincialized. In the 1990s they provincialized colleges and now also, you know, uh, you know, recently also they provincialized colleges. They, prov they keep on provincializing. And you can schools. see that there yeah. is an attempt yeah, to resolve and, and issues. And you remember that before in Assam, the finance minister was the same person yes. holding education yes. and holding uh, health sector, a health department. Yes. And therefore, you know, they can really channelize. But, you know, but uh, we in our state, we keep saying these are not our employees. These are the employees of the private sector. That would not solve the problem. You, what is needed is we should have the political will to solve this problem and take the state ahead. But Robert, do you have anything to say as a lawyer do you think there's a possibility that these teachers will go to court? And if they go to court, will their case stand? <coughs> uh, I want you to speak as a lawyer and as an activist, both. Okay, thank you. Uh, <coughs> I think uh, before going into this uh, question that you have raised, I think there's one thing that needs to be understood. Is education of two primary has become 
the fundamental right. Let's not make any mistake on this. And the moment we say fundamental right, mean there's no excuse. It doesn't matter you have money, you do not, you have to enforce it. Otherwise, if we say that we do not uh, have money for law enforcement, can we afford people is, uh, is getting killed? They have a right to live. Education, since uh, sin insertion of Article 21A has to become a fundamental right. And since RTE is in place, it's already become a fundamental right. What are we even need to be further discussed? In India, it is a duty of the state government and the union government to enforce every fundamental right. And education is one of them. And if you look into the problem faced by the teachers community in the state of Mechlia, we don't have much of a problem in college, in colleges, higher secondary and secondary school. Of course, there are problems, but not much compared to LPUP. And we were talking about the number of schools, we are talking about the problem faced by the uh, teachers also. And the, uh, and, the, uh, and the performance index, mostly if we properly examine it's because of the LP and UP. And SSA, the, the, the group who agitate also, SSA is under uh, LP and UP school. So this is the problem where the state has a duty under the Constitution of India to enforce it, but we have miserably failed it. That is the first thing. The second point is that when, when education up to up, uh, from age group of from 6 to 14, which means law, LP and UP school, has become a fun, fundamental right. The government should be thankful to the managing committee, to the sponsoring body, to the church, the Dorbarsnong, the private individual, for setting school, for setting up school. It, they should be thankful for at least helping them in, in, in ensure that this fundamental right is given to the people of the state. And now saying that it's your employee, you we we can only provide them grant and and we will do it as per the capacity that we have and the education minister directly say to the past, first term that we give what we have it doesn't matter you uh, it doesn't matter you uh, you uh, you are happy or not it's like saying to the to your uh, to to the per person who has helping you is that you have come and help me and excuse us it, it's up to us how to pay i mean that that uh, that is very bad it's not even a, a, a valid i mean Salary honorarium is fixed based on certain reasonable ground, the high in prices, the, uh, and, and everything. It cannot you can just cannot say that we help you as much as we can. No, no, we cannot. Uh, we cannot. Uh, it has to be done. some rationalization. There has to be some rationalization because of the inflation so, and all. Mm -hmm. So this is a thing, and the second problem is done. The government also, in order to helping the school, they have to have a lot of money. And we have a lot of, of school which perform which the which their performance, I mean, is worse. Mm -hmm. This school, the problem is this this school, as uh, you correctly say, the government is already inherited through this council when they take over. And now with SSA, instead of following the norms yes. while uh, while uh, implement SSA program in the state, they just opening school right and left. Right. Everywhere. And whom to blame? You cannot blame teachers. If MC invite for uh, for MC invite for application, everybody will go and apply. And the moment you appoint, you have to pay. Why the state government allow MC to do it at that point of time? Now you cannot blame teachers. That is second thing. And and the last and uh, and the last thing which we have a problem is that I have not seen that the government of Mechlia now has bring a policy when it comes to provincialize of school. Sam has uh, has bring several law how to provincialize what are the things that you need to qualify for provincialize in Mechlia, in order to get provincialized the thing that you need to qualify is that you have link with some politician simple as that there's no provision how colleges were picked in order to in order to become a community college can can anyone explain on what basis this is this is very, it's very political uh, this, it's very political uh, this is this involve public money and and while spending the public money it's not your whim and fancy it's that you can do whatever you want but so where, how my, do we get away from this so, politicization uh, when of, it comes to court no, when it comes to court i mean let me uh, uh, inform uh, uh, today i've bring this judgment actually uh, it is a judgment uh, uh, given by justice assassin is a pro-teacher's judgment. 
which uh, which stated that the teachers need to get uh, pension, equal pay for equal work, and everything. Of course, the uh, the uh, the division bench has stayed this order on the ground that uh, on the ground that uh, uh, state was not uh, given a chance to uh, find some sort of additional affidavit. Now it's revert back to the original uh, to the original uh, to the single bench again, not original because Justice Sarsen has retired. So I mean, the 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 Mekhlia High Court through this judge has spelled out everything on this. It spell it spell out the equal pay and equal right concept. I mean, the teachers will have to teach the same uh, syllabus, and when it comes to number of school, the the this uh, government aided school will uh, they will, they have more uh, student if we compare. And he dealt with the pension. If MLA MP get pension, why not teachers? MDC also <laughs> entitled pension. Why not teachers? They oh. they serve more time if we compare to the, in, in public life compared to them. And and importantly, as I say, if we want to solve this problem one and for all, it's high time for a state uh, for the for for the state government. First of all, you bring a law on how to provincialize the school. You set a benchmark that this is the benchmark that the school has to do in order to qualify for provincialization. And there is a law on another government from Glia where the government can stop Aden. There is. All you need is how to do it. Let's identify who is the non-performing school. If college can get grid, why not school? We need to have some sort of authority where grid system will be given to colleges and those school who perform better, let's give them more money. See, with colleges, so I feel, with I colleges feel those, and universities, yes. you have NAC. NAC. Yes. Why what do you we have? have SACs in the state? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, so the, anyone the, does anything uh, they like and uh, nobody actually knows the outcome. So except why, except when the uh, embos results come, then yes. we know that there are sure. schools without any yes. pass. So so I feel like uh, uh, Mechlia is high time for Mechlia to stop politicized education. It's high time for Mechlia to to uh, to come with one mindset, and that mindset should be we can't compromise on. On, uh, on the quality of education, let's uh, let's come clear. Is is uh, we can do politics on a lot of things, but at least let's spare education. Let's spare on education. We cannot afford uh, root if any bad contractor still. No, we can do it, but a career of, of a student one is spoiled is spoiled. You cannot uh, you cannot uh, send a twelve year old go back to uh, to nursery. It cannot be done. So I I do feel that if the government have a strong political will. And we have able uh, officers. I, I have met them several times. It's all is needed is that we need to have strong political will. And the moment we have strong political will, this issue will be settled down. But don't you think also, let me come to you, Moba, uh, that education is the least discussed issue in the state assembly? And recently the governor said that even in parliament, education is never discussed. It's brought into the house at the last moment, there's no more uh, time left to discuss, so it's guillotined. In Meghalaya, we haven't even seen education being discussed. Do you re recall uh, if this issue has been discussed? For instance, uh, according to the state RTE rules, no, 2011, uh, the teachers are paid a fixed remuneration, but that is contradictory to the RTE Act, right? They are not supposed to be paid a fixed remuneration. They are supposed to be, they are supposed to get their increments, uh, and they are supposed to get other facilities as well. But those are not listed out clearly. I think. So, what do you have to say about that? Uh, that's why in our proposal, uh, we have clearly mentioned that. You see, right from 2019, the main demand of the federation is to upgrade the school to deficit system or deficit pattern. But later on, when we met the education minister time and time again, he clearly stated that let us stop discussing about deficitation. Why do we raise that question of deficit system? Because recently, Robert also talked about community college. The, the, the government, they are also ad hoc college. The government, they provide them a sanctioned post. The, according to us, we think that after the government, had provide a sanctioned post to the ad hoc college. Maybe later on it will be the time of the ad hoc schools. The government also will upgrade us to any category. 
But it was only later on that we realized that the government has got no plan for the ad hoc school. So what happened when the government said that, let us not discuss about deficit, deficit system. So what did we do? We were forced to propose another proposal in the form of a uniform enhancement that is we are demanding around 18,000 enhancement of all categories of teachers, plus that 5% increment. We really stress the government on this increment. Because when we talk about that enhancement, we also we know that if the government does not give us 18,000, we will be satisfied if the government give us only 13 or 14,000 out of what we demand. But apart from that, what really important to us is the increment. Why do we stress on increment? The very important thing is that when we talk about increment, and let me state here, there are at least uh, three points which I, which I want to mention here when we talk about increment. The, the first point when we talk about increment, we can say here that it will stop and prevent the teachers from coming to the street. That was the very important point. The secondly, when we talk about this increment, there will be a, a difference of salary between the new teacher and the old existing teacher. As of now, what you need to understand, if a new teacher was appointed, when we compare with any teacher, for example, Bart Robert, who has been teaching for 30 years, we get the same salary, fixed pay. So with this increment, which means that there will be a difference of payment. And the last thing, what we wanted to point here, is that this increment, what will it do? It will help, we can say here, to cope, or we can say here, uh, to help the teachers in time of inflation. When we talk about inflation, we know that the rate of inflation, it keeps on rising. So this increment, at least, it will help the teachers. Especially uh, now. Especially inflation. now. When inflation we talk about now, just three soaring. years, four years back, the rate of inflation, it keeps on rising. But, uh, these are the three main points that we are stressing. So recently, when the government, on the 4th of July, uh, they make a decision to enhance our salary, we all know that we are not satisfied. We clearly state to the press we are not satisfied with the government decision. But later on, when we realize that, okay, whatever the government gave us, we had to accept it. But what matters now most is if the government can give this increment to us. At least for the time being, we will survive. Okay. So it's <coughs> you're fighting one battle at a time. Yes, one battle at a time. So, Babat Skem. What are your views on hearing across the table? Uh, what is one suggestion you would like to give the government, if not more? You say that one suggestion. Because, I, because yeah. in your social media post, I don't know whether it was you or some other people who said that uh, it is the bureaucracy that runs Meghalaya. Okay? Uh, we, we hear of fund diversion from this department to another department because of shortfall. Why isn't the same happening with education? Why can't, uh, because at the end of the year, you find funds being returned to Delhi from different departments. Why can't there be a, a kind of a really intrusive kind of uh, brainstorm where these things can be addressed? Okay, before we go further, I just want to highlight here. The statement made by one education minister of Megha. It's very sad to hear that when you said that I'm forced to become the education minister when no one else was there to take up the job. So that statement in itself <laughs> explains that in Meghalaya political setup, education is never in nobody, the agenda. Nobody nobody ever wants to, to take be the, to be a, to be the education minister. minister. When Mr. Manas Chaudhary was education minister, he he started doing yeah. a lot of work. And I remember at that time, some of these uh, high-level uh, officers, they said, why do you want to, <laughs> you know, shake up the hornet's yeah. nest? It's it's too complicated to resolve. You see, when, when you see this uh, education, how education department works, is, you know, when I look at it, I just fail to understand. Had the education department been proactive, the bureaucracy and the political leadership, you know, like being active and, you know, they're really effective and efficient, 
All these kind of problems that we have now, I don't think we will be having. In 1981, they enact a school, Meghalaya School Education Act. Yeah. And in that act, they have a provision where they would regulate the private schools. Mm. They would regulate the uh, service conditions of teachers. But why even today, no, rule. no rules have been framed mm. under the provisions of, the, of that act? Mm. What? The second thing, even the permission and creation of schools, it was only in 2013 that they have the rules. So from 1972 up to 2013, anybody can just open schools, anybody can just you know, establish schools without you know, uh, fulfilling the norms. In 2001, the NCTE has come up with the minimum qualification of teachers, mm -hmm. but Megaria was never alive to that condition imposed by, you know, by, imposed, you know, made by the NCT. And therefore, we have all these kind of problems, what uh, we call the, you know, the untrained teachers. Because right from 2000 on, 2001 onwards, the teachers were not trained, not having the degree, they <coughs> were appointed. And even now also, they are being appointed and the norms are not being followed. When you, when you see these different schemes ad hoc, then, you know, lump sum grant, when you see this deficit, all these are made on the basis of executive order, no legislation. Mm -hmm. And for example, ad hoc, you don't know exactly what the scheme is all about. And there's no proper so guidelines. So it's, it's really ad hoc. It's yeah, really it's ad hoc. Ad hoc. <laughs> there's no proper guidelines. Who can get the scheme? Who, you know, which scheme, uh, which school can be given this and on, under what conditions, everything as pointed by, by no, Robert, no problem, everything problem is based on political decision. Do we have any policy that guides us uh, at this Madam, moment? Madam, you know, like uh, this, uh, I just try to add to what Ba said. When you talk about deficitization, in 2018, the government of Meghalaya adopted the Meghalaya State Education Policy. And in that act, they say that we will reduce the number of categories of teachers. But if you read the mind of the government, read the mind of the government, they apply the negative thought to it. In the sense that instead of being positive, they, they, they want to have this negative equality where even the better placed schools, like deficit, they'll be brought down to the level of the lump sum. You know, if you read the mind of the government, what they have been doing, and you know, and this is the sad reality. And I don't think that, you know, like uh, unless and until there is a connection with electoral politics, anything can change in Megalia. I don't see, with you know, with that kind of mindset that I have. So, uh, allow me to just. Uh, I will not. I'm not here to defend the government. Or this is. Uh, it's very very correct what you all said. Baas mentioned about the economics of education. Now, I can also uh, connect this with ba Robert Roo, uh, the way he put in very beautifully the concept of education in Bengalia. Where do we go wrong? The economics of uh, education is very simple. In Bengalia, we have about 36,000 teachers under the banner of the finance department. We pay the salaries. True, it is not equal in many respects. And uh, there is a problem of ad hoc lump sum, all these issues that we have. And I think uh, the foresight is uh, lacking there. We could not, financially, we could not really understood, you know, the, uh, the implication that will come in the years to come. Uh, these are the problem actually, which is, which is the government of the day is actually facing. It's a very tough decision to make, especially when it comes to financial and planning. Because these financial, <coughs> like you said, Madam, uh, when you say like about returning returning uh, funds to government of India, this will amount to diversion of fund and CAG will come in. And there's a lot of issue that we cannot discuss here at this point. But education, financially, in education, it is the most difficult part. There's no other government, I'll tell you, or any other reforms that can come in unless and until we go for what you said, school accreditation. Mm. One moment we go for school accreditation, then only we can assess the, the, the performance of school. Like today we have SSA schools. You, if I tell you the, the people-teacher ratios in SSA schools, only one to 17. Mm. 
I mean, one teacher to 17 students. That's a huge difference. Even for ad hoc school also. The same number of teachers with the same number of students. So actually, the PTR is very, very healthy. Best in the world, best in India, in fact, at the elementary level. So we have huge investment on teachers itself. There is pay disparity, no doubt. But the financial part, the government of the day simply cannot sit and solve in one, in one, in one, in five years, for that matter. There's a lot of policy decision that we made. But, a lot it, of policy but that when it comes to, to when it comes to SSA, yeah. funds are from the central government, right? Ninety ten. See what happened. I will I will come to SSA also. No? What happened in SSA is this. Uh, they gave you a, a fund, funds sh uh, sharing pattern for 1910 on the entire uh, budget that they have, estimated budget. But they'll also give you an actual release, which is below that 90%. And they will have salary capping also, which the government of Meghalaya has to come up with, which is huge amount. Salary capping, on top of that, the 10% share that the state government has to come in. Now, one has to understand the, the, the financial status of Meghalaya. We all know that. There's a lot of, uh, lot of uh, uh, suggestion that you made about 10% surcharge and all that. It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing that you, if you can do that. And if the money is actually transacted and channel, channelized to education, that will be very, very helpful. But as of today, this is what the government of Meghalaya is facing. The government of India will only give you, the, I'll give you the example of the, this year's budget. The actual budget is, estimated budget is 602 crore. The government of uh, India will only give us 372 crore. And in that 370 crore, that is not only salary. There is also non-recurring. We'll go into buildings, we'll go into infrastructures, toilets, and all other uh, uh, intervention that we have. And also in quality intervention. Very little of that. In fact, government of India doesn't think about salary at all. They will just say, Do you take, this is, a, this is the money for salary that we have given you, the capping that we have. The rest, the government of Meghalaya, the state, state, uh, state of Meghalaya has to come in. Okay, considering that we are all very concerned about education and that we need the resources, we used to take, uh, I mean, the government used to take professional taxes, right? Mm -hmm. And right. that goes to the district councils. Mm -hmm. Now, why should that not go into the kitty of the education department? And not for mm -hmm. infrastructure building, but for so, salaries. Point taken, ma'am. That only when the, like Sir so said very, very correctly, there, there's a political will, there's a proper planning, the proper financial planning for that matter, then only we could, uh, you know, you, you could come in with the proper financial status. But as of now, these <coughs> things are very, very complicated. I'm from the education department, I will not be able to explain to you the financial stature. I'm not at all deals with finance. So that will be best answered by finance people from the finance department. So planning department. What percentage of the GDP of Meghalaya goes to education? As of now, it's about four four percent, but throughout all the other uh, levels, from elementary up to higher. higher education. So that is nothing in comparison to the dimension of the, the volume of uh, investment that we have in education in, in Meghalaya. Do you know that Meghalaya, among the Northeast, apart from Assam, we have the highest number of schools. And the highest number of teachers. You, you might say that Manipur is doing very well. Manipur is doing very well because they have very few schools. And most of the schools are run by government. Even SSA schools are actually run by the government. We had made mistake when we first, the initial stages of SSA, like you said. Anyone who wants a school, they take it. Any politician who wants a school, they, 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 they receive school. It is also the fault of the government of India in many aspects. It was, they told us just to improve accessibility in the elementary level. Universalization of education had happened. Mm. And then come RTE. So there was not proper planning at the grassroots level. There was no need-based uh, analysis at the a, at a grassroots level. And school was just given that. And because the government feels that uh, to, to lessen the burden, so they gave it to private bodies, NGOs, community, churches. So there was actual no communication, there's no kind of a planning, proper planning about the, uh, you know, the sustainability of the schools. Mm. So what happened is that as time goes by, it multiplies. And today we have 12,541 teachers standing in the streets.
for very for a for a very good cause, but the government is tight. The education department hands are tight. We cannot do much. Yes. We all depend on the financial. Uh, as, uh, you know, financial, financial so there has to be government. a reimagining of Correct. the budgeting mm -hmm. process and several other areas from where revenue can be mopped up. We have to r rationalize first of all schools, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Like Ba said very, very, very clearly, we have to rationalize schools. We have to cut the number of schools mm -hmm. and improve schools. Existing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have what we in, in uh, the NEP 2020 also has given us the opportunities to set up school complexes. Mm -hmm. Now we have one school in one village, strengthen that school. Why you spend other, uh, yes, money into these, uh, these satellite schools? Yeah. yeah, strengthen the school and provide escorts and transportation facilities mm -hmm. to you know students from other areas who, to come in and uh, get the benefit of the the, the, the main school, the best school in the area. You have best access to uh, teaching uh, methodologies, pedagogies. You have access to computers, ICT. You know, we have a good school, like we have invested 117 schools under ADB program. These schools can be model schools. We have uh, about 81 Aramese schools under Samagra Siksha. These schools also are model schools. Mm -hmm. Then we are going to have 40 EMRS schools, Eklava um, Model Residential School. These also are uh, at the level of GNV. So they can be model schools. Why do we need to invest more on other schools? So there has to be a planning and it has to be, like you said, political will. So we have to forget about Political any other aspect uh, of uh, politics. Get the, you know, you have to work like an industry <laughs> in many ways. No? Okay. Now we are running out of time. So would you like to say anything else? Your last word? Okay. My last word is when you talk about this rationalization of school, actually that's very needed. But what is more important is for the department to be on its toes. It has been lacking. 1981, they made an act. Why didn't they come with the rules? That was that was a question. You know, we have the government. Maybe now. there's no push. Why isn't it that there is a push for this? You see, like uh, you know, for, for you know, when I say, uh, like uh, this one, uh, you know, when we talk about this, uh, blaming the history, mm. right? You know, we have in inherited, but I don't know for what reason this government, this government created another problem. The education policy 2018 said that we will uh, minimize the number of categories. But during its term, it created another category of colleges. That is people's uh, community. A community college yes, scheme. So I just fail to understand. And also, they continue with the same thing where they started before, where they started the scheme without any proper guidelines. As Robert said, you, you know, like you give the scheme or the grant to a very, you know, to a new college and in the rural or uh, urban area, but to a college that has been contributing hugely and it is the only college in the district, it has not been given the, uh, the current aid. Yeah. So, you know, there's no criteria, the criteria. And in fact, it is continuing. And therefore, I say that this blaming history will not solve the problem. Rather, we need the government to, to say that we should act now. But it's not blaming, sir. Yeah. yeah. It is learning from history. Uh, learning. Yeah. So, but Robert. Okay. Uh, this, this one thing, of course, we need uh, uh, political will. But uh, personally, personally, in in order to lift this uh, this problem of education and how to come out with solution on this in the hand of politician is too risky. Mm -hmm. To be very frank, it's too risky. I mean, out of this that we have, how many even know what is education policy? To be very frank, and I mean, I, the, I do feel I, the education minister said I, uh, he was that, forced uh, to take education. That, no, that he, no, not only that, yeah. but that people are taking away children from government, government schools. Schools. Right. schools. I mean, I mean, uh, so it, it, it has become too serious, and and education is what education is in 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 a social welfare state. As I say, it's a fundamental right. It's, I think it's high time that we did that we need to uh, to solve this problem and one and fall. And as a suggestion, and as a suggestion to the government, I I, I seen in this past uh, two three weeks that government is planning with the commission. I feel that is yeah. that, that, is that we are in the right track. Bring, but bring also an effective a, non political a commission, commission, but with the right people. Yes, there. non 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 political uh, people, if needed to bring a, a resource from outside the state, also let it be. But unless in this commission, we would like to see that 
uh, member from uh, MC also at least one will be there. Member from teachers also one will be there. Maybe civil society will be there. And officers who has been served in the state and education department, maybe uh, member secretary. I mean with the right commission, where this commission will at least visit every block, learn their opinion. We as public also will give every suggestion that we have. I do feel that if this commission is given a free hand, let them do the proper study. Let them analyze the, the, the provision of finance and planning. I feel if the government is really serious in solving this, uh, this, uh, this problem, set up a proper commission, in, ensure that the term and referent of this commission is covering off planning, yeah. fashion, transparent, before you, uh, before the commission submit the recommendation to the government, at least, uh, at least uh, upload in the website about the preliminary where people can still comment on its report. I feel at this point of time, since we are running out of time, if the government is serious, come with the commission, we are ready to give uh, all the okay, suggestions that we will give. I think, uh, and, and when this commission give a report, the government should at least abide by this commission. You just cannot put in. Uh, you just cannot throw away this uh, this uh, recommendation. Yeah. But what's important, as I say, is that it has to be a non-political commission. No, nobody should dictate from the from the political. It should party. not be a, another no, state planning a, board or something. Only independent commission would have that sense of responsibility of in in, in solve this this the, the 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 education one of all. I mean to 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 conclude my speech. We have been once a point of time as a center. Yeah. Where all the northeast will come. You go whenever I go and traveling uh, across the northeast state. I would be feel proud to say that if mid minister, if we meet officer, say that I pass from Saint Denis, I pass from uh, Lady Kin, I pass from Saint Edmund. I mean, almost all the leader in northeast that we have today pass from Shillong. Yes. We still can do it. I believe that we still can do it. All is needed is that we need to have right people and right place, and after that, government should only follow. Mm -hmm. So on that note, uh, viewers, we have heard some very, very enlightened arguments and suggestions especially. And we hope that the government will take this seriously and that the commission that will be set up will be completely non-political and it should show that it has an agenda to save education and to save the dignity of the teachers. Thank you very much.